Yeah. Perfect. And uh, can you explain about these infants, uh, how old they will be? And uh... Well, they can be as young as six weeks and they can go up to about nine months. Once they start crawling, they move out of the infant room because the next room has a lot more floor space. This room is much more individual. So like if they need a bottle at specific times, we can accommodate. Once they move out, we try to get them more on, on a regular schedule with the rest of the kids. So it becomes a little bit more structured as we progress through. So, yeah, definitely very individualized. Hi, hello, namaste. Welcome to Manjula Reddy's world. This is Aintan. So in this classroom, we have kids that are nine months to about 18 months. We do provide the food, but because it's a transitional room, it's like young, we call it young toddlers. And it's transition, meaning there could be babies in here that are still on bottles and baby food. There's other babies that are completely eating table food. So in this room, parents can bring the baby food and be a little bit more customized. But generally at around 12 or 13 months, they are providing, we provide everything. And we do morning snack, lunch, and afternoon snack. So as an example, today they had hummus with flatbread for their afternoon snack. Um, and everybody had that, unless there would be someone that has, you can come through, unless there would be somewhere in here, here yeah. that would have an allergy to it, in which case we would have to provide something different. So we just keep a file of what everybody Can has we send to. our own food if we want? In these two rooms, you can. Okay. Beyond that, we do need a doctor's note to send our own food. And the reason is we have a lot of kids with really severe allergies. Okay. So our concern with that is just that if we start allowing food coming from home and we don't know what's in that food, mm. it could pose a problem for someone who has like a life-threatening allergy. So, but yes, we call this young toddlers. And then moving up here, we have the next step, which is our toddler program. And everybody's kind of on the same schedule. This group is more the um, 18 to 24 month room. Um, yeah, so these guys, they're all walking. So the biggest difference here, we don't have cribs in the room. It's all, everybody can walk. So if someone needs to get out quickly and needs to evacuate in terms of, um, you know, for fire safety or anything like that, they have to be able to walk out. Um, they How all old sleep, the kids are here? They're more like 18 to 24 months. They all sleep on cots in here, so there's no more cribs. So okay. the cots are about, I'd say, six inches off the ground. And the teachers are in here. They can help pat their backs as they're falling asleep and that kind of thing. Okay. But that's what we call toddlers. This is our kitchen, and I will give you a sample menu. Um, so we have morning snack, lunch, and afternoon snack each day. So today was the 13th. We had cereal with milk. The younger kids just get Cheerios because they can't have the raisins. The older kids get raisin bran. Here they had chicken and broccoli casserole, which our cook makes with fruit salad and milk. And then we actually had to substitute this because our bananas weren't quite ripe enough. So we switched it for the hummus and we'll do the sunflower banana later in the week. Um, coming down this way, and I know it sounds like that was mainly your questions with those, but I'll quickly show you these. This is one of our two-year-old rooms. Yeah, we call it early preschool. Okay. Um, so they are two to about two and a half. And this is where we start the potty training. So lots of work on potty training in this room. Okay. And we actually divide them pretty closely in age. So that's about two to two and a half. This room is more like two and a half to three. And then at the end of the hall, I can show you this because, oh, they're just waking up. We have, um, so yeah, you can record the sign, but just don't record the kids in there. This is our, what we call preschool, they have to be three and potty trained. And this is where, not to say we're not, we're learning a lot in these rooms as well, but this is where it becomes extremely structured with like small group math and small group reading. They begin learning some Spanish. So it kind of introduces some additional elements and gets them ready for the pre-K. Oh, okay. And then over here, um, this is our Explorer program, and this is the one that I was telling you about for the after school. And I do believe I have one more, I could do one more full time, or I could do a Tuesday, Thursday. I can't do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's full. Um, and we can go in there, I'll we'll just turn the, so this is their um, outside space here. We're in the process of getting a new fence put in. Okay. So they had to put in that temporary section. Mm -hmm. Kids playground. 
this is the, uh, how this often, is the big kids. How often you can take uh, to the playground. So this is for the after school kids. And then this part here is our pre-K wing. So we take them outside twice a day. The kids that are here for a full day. After school kids come out. They usually come in, have snack, get their homework done. And then they'll take about half hour outside. If the um, weather is good. If the weather's good. And then the younger kids do get out in the morning and the afternoon. As long as, again, the weather is good. Well, if they're here all day, they, this group doesn't take a nap. The younger kids, of course, do. Um, this group does not take a nap. To the park, or we might go watch a baseball game, or, you know, it's just a variety of different things based on the... The preschoolers you take? Or not the preschoolers, just the elementary age. Elementary, okay. Down here is our pre k So this is the last full-time program that we have. Mm -hmm. um, this is, and again, yeah, just don't record the kids, but you can record the name. This is, um, they do wear uniforms. Because so it's just, it kind of makes it feel very much like a school. They get excited when it's their turn to wear uniforms. So then uh, two different pre-K rooms. What age these kids are? Four to five. They have to be four by September to be part of pre-K. Okay. So, yeah, and we have two different pre-K rooms. Outside of every classroom, we do have our weekly lesson plans posted, and that goes for all of our classrooms. Obviously, the after-school program is a bit more relaxed just because we have, um, you know, they've already been in school all day. So they do have a plan, but it includes more of kind of that snack time, homework time, outdoor time where we might have something organized. And then they have kind of small group, like game zones and different things where they can have whatever they're interested in. Mm -hmm. This is just the other side to our kitchen. She's cleaning, kind okay. of further on. Well, we call it balanced learning, which kind of, I think it describes it well, because it's definitely a balance of many different philosophies in early childhood education. It includes everything from language to early math skills to social emotional to the science component. You'll definitely see the STEAM-based learning as we progress through. There's a very strong character development program. So even in the after school program, you know, like while we said they're in school all day and they, you know, we don't want to try to teach them too much after school, there's a big component with the character development. Like they did a fun project over the holidays where they um, kind of helped organize a school wide, what we call the penny pail, where the kids did chores at home and earned money for doing their chores. And that, that group, the school agers actually went, purchased food and took it to the food bank. So that was That's kind of great. a neat little school-wide project that they helped with. So we really try to encourage them to learn about helping others and being involved in their community and things like that. They also did a shoe drive where they helped do all the flyers for it and they counted how many shoes and they took them all to Saxon. They took a field trip to Saxon. And of course we let them that, the that would be afterwards. fun for kids. Yeah. <laughs> but they some. enjoyed it. Of yeah. course, yeah, yeah. That's good. So I can write down the pricing if you're interested. Summer program, what we're gonna do in March is we're gonna survey all of our current pre-K students because of course they'll be kindergarten next year mm -hmm. and ask you know, who wants to come for summer camp. We're gonna ask all the current kids who's planning to come for summer because some of them don't need it. We might have parents that just don't work in the summer or teachers or whatever. Um, once we get a handle on how many of the current students will be staying, that will tell us how many spaces we have. Now, obviously, if you enrolled your son now, he would have a space guaranteed for the summer. But if you opt not to, but you're interested for the summer, we should know more about that by mid-April. Okay. So, yeah. So, I can write his name down. Age groups. So, kind of infant over here, two and under, three and four-year-olds, and then this is four or five and, and elementary age. So everybody side. have their own different mm -hmm. uh, play areas. And we have a little garden, too. So, in the spring, we'll start planting some things. I guess we could start now as warm as it's been, Kids, huh? kids will plant? Or? They do. Yeah, oh, they're they do. involved in that, too. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I capped it at 18. So, I have 17 right now. So that's you why have I one, more, room one, for more, one yeah. more that I can take because the ratio is one teacher for every 18. In the but summer, all age groups, more. you take only 18 people maximum? Or? No, no, it varies depending on the, the ratio in the classroom. So for that group, because they're the group that are in elementary school, we can have 18 kids with the one teacher. And that's all we have in there right now. But for the summer, we'll have another teacher in there. We'll have two buses and we'll want to be able to go on field trips. So we'll probably go up to 27 for the summer. Most of our rooms, like the three and fours, are 20 with two teachers. The younger rooms have less because, you know, there's 
you have to have more teachers. <laughs> so right. We just have four in our young toddler room right now with one teacher just because we don't have enough teachers. We need to hire some more. Okay, okay. this is the kitchen. She has a friend at home that has a baby. And couldn't no, not that often, but we well, they have freezers. Yeah. 